Hello, everyone. Okay. Obviously, there's one thing that's on your mind. It's this NVIDIA. Blah, 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 blah. I'm so sick of hearing about AI. And I think it's like this overdone thing. It had all this hype back in the 60s. It had all this hype 20 years ago. Now it's being hyped again. Yeah, whatever. Big deal. We're not here to talk about AI. We're here to talk about how to make money. Now, I just want you to understand something. Okay. NVIDIA had these incredible numbers. It's a revolution. AI is going to change everything. It's a disruptive technology. The company reported it's trading up about 6% to around 500. All right, let's take a deep breath. Let's step back a minute here, okay? Now, I want you to think back, if you can remember, I know it seems like a long time ago because we had the uh, COVID thing in between here and there. But remember the cannabis boom? Remember when cannabis was going to change everything and be the disruptive thing or whatever? Let me just go and show you a simple article I Googled. First thing that came up from very late in 2018, legal marijuana industry had banner year, 10 billion worth of investments. The momentum is sure to continue. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Do you remember where you were then? I I totally remember where I was then. I was working on this hedge fund in New Canaan. For this guy who was, yeah, he was, yeah, he was okay. He was arrogant. He owes me a lot of money, but whatever. Hopefully he'll listen to this and send me my check. But I'm not going to hold my breath. But anyway, okay, so we got this. We got Snoop Dogg, Casse Verda, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you a stock. That was one of the, I guess, disruptive, uh, you know, that, that's kind of the term now, and it was kind of the term then. But anyway, here's Aurora Cannabis. And remember what we just saw, that 2019 was going to be a banner year. So here's January, the stock's trading around 60. By March, it's up to 123. Now, what happened by the end of the year? down 80 percent i also want you to look at the price to sales ratio here okay so 2019 the price to sales ratio of aurora cannabis was 167 well that's october of 18. um let's go to january 61. right now as we speak the average price to sales ratio in the s p 500 is 2.4 okay when things have price to sales ratios that are this high, it is indicative of a bubble environment. All right. Now, bubbles can keep going for a while, but eventually they pop. And as traders, what we do is, hey, we go along for the ride. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Just to bring up another thing here. Remember Tilray? You know, everyone's like, oh, you know, Tilray this. I think it was the first um, publicly traded cannabis company. And this thing doesn't even fit on the chart anymore. Okay, so remember what we just saw, 2019. Now, you know, let's give us, a, let's give ourselves a little bit of, a uh, little bit of liter literary freedom. September of 2018, the stock's at 297. It's at two and a half now. It is down 99%. Let's look at the price to sales ratio here. Oh my goodness. In January of 19, it was $200. Everyone back then was talking about, oh, cannabis this, cannabis this, that. Now, as someone who saw the Grateful Dead, you know, more than 100 times, I am very well versed with cannabis. But I'm just not even trying to point that out. I'm just trying to point out to you the characteristics of a bubble. Okay. So, December of 18. Everyone's like cannabis this, cannabis that, blah, 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 blah. So now we're into this AI kick. NVIDIA had these earnings that are really almost too good to believe. I would not be surprised to find out there's some kind of fraud or shady stuff going on there. But I'm not going to say that because I don't want to get sued. But even if I'm wrong and even if the company is doing that well, it doesn't mean the stock isn't going to go lower. So let's look at uh nvidia here and let's look at the price to sales ratio because 
Right now, this stock has the highest, highest price to sales ratio in the S&P. It's about 44. This is not sustainable, okay? Eventually, this stock is going to be lower. It will it be next week. Will it be in two years? I don't know. So you're like, all right, well, what the hell am I supposed to do? Okay, let me go and show you something here from a trading point of view. Now, when this company first blasted off back here in May, I said, let's keep an eye on this for a short. When we want to do a trade, we have different things we look at. We have our setup. We have our trigger. Then we have our target. All right. The setup is the get ready, get set. Now, remember, I'm looking at this as a short idea. So I'm meaning like, you know, buying puts, thinking the stock is going to go down. So what happened back here? We got this huge number. My thesis was kind of like, all right, well, you know, AI is in vogue. It's probably an over A action, blah, blah, blah. If it gets back below this important 380 level where there was support, I would think about throwing on a short position, meaning buying puts, probably around 370. Look at what happened. It never got there. Therefore, I never got run over. It was a trade idea, but I never got into it because the parameters of what I wanted to be met to actually get into the trade were not met. So we go higher. Now I say, okay, same line of reasoning. I suspect we're going to have a reversal. If we get below this 410 level, that's when I jump in. Guess what? We didn't get there. So I didn't jump in. Guess what? We kept moving higher. I told myself, hey, if we get below this 440 level, I am kind of convinced that this reversal I've been suspecting is going to happen. I will enter the position around 430, 435. Guess what? That's what Professor Mark did. I bought some puts. I made some nice money. We got down to a former support level. That was my price target because we know things tend to pause at former support levels or resistance levels. And, you know, I'm not saying like yay me or anything like that. I'm just trying to tell you, if you let the market tell you what to do, that's how you can make some good profits. Then the stock blasts off again. I'm on the sidelines. Now we get up to a level that was previously resistance, 480. Stock is trading at 500 in the aftermarket. I am thinking if we get back below 480, it's going to continue to go lower. That's where I will take a short position. Maybe it goes higher. Maybe it goes to 520. Maybe it goes to 600. Maybe it goes to 800. I keep bringing up that trigger level. If My thought is that if we pass this level on the way down, the sell-off will continue. So I'm not guessing. I'm not saying if it gets to 500, I'm going to buy puts. If it gets to 700, I'm going to buy puts. I don't know, man. I mean, the stock could go to $10,000 a share. I mean, I have no idea. But what I do know from being a trader for a long time is if I let the market tell me what to do and I don't guess, my odds of being successful are going to be much greater. All right, everybody. So that's all I wanted to say. Remember, bubbles come around. It's the same stuff. It, I would personally be shocked if this stock is not lower now. I mean, lower than it is now in a year. But at Stock Market Jobber, we're more traders than we are investors. So we this is what we want. We want stocks that are going to move, and this is how we profit. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody.